Welcome. Well, you are at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family. And we are delighted that you have welcomed us into your home. We know what a privilege it is to be there. We certainly would love to hear from you, so just send us an email with a question or a comment to jimandjoy at EWTN.com. And today, our guests again are Dr. Mark and Molly Druffner. They are Catholic missionaries and founders of Partners for Hope Tanzania. Please go to their website, P, the number four, H-T, dot org. And we certainly had a wonderful conversation with them. The show went so fast yesterday, and today we're going to continue that yeah. conversation. Uh, the follow-up, you know, they went as with their seven children, stayed for three months, then they came back, and then God was getting ready to turn the page yeah. and say... The story continues, yeah. and we're going to hear yeah, about, about the story how the story continue. continuing and ways that maybe you can get involved. And we're certainly going to get involved and, and do something, too. Yeah. Well, you know, we have 17 grandkids. <laughs> and so literally on the weekends, we're in gyms. Uh, we're, we're someplace watching. Football fields, basketball football courts. Football fields. And volleyball, so yeah. last week, well, it was, it was Friday night, um, Wesley, our fourth child uh, is a coach and he has a son named James and um, Wes is a basketball coach and they made it to the finals and so yeah. we couldn't go because of the crazy season just it was crazy so we were like if they make it to the finals we're going and lo and behold thank God they yeah. made it to the finals yeah. and we got to see James yeah. play and it was amazing when we went to the game you know, James is about six years old, seven yeah. years old. And, you know, he's just this big basketball player. He's not really that big. And all the kids, they were the same size as he was, and they were all, like, really skinny. They were and, so And I, I just sat there for the first time, and I said, they're so small. I mean, everybody is so small. And well, we're, we're used to seeing Nathan, who's, right. you know, 6'4", 265 pounds. We showed him on Monday, 6'2", 265. Or our other grandsons. And we went, and we just laughed so much <laughs> because yeah. it was so much fun yeah. to watch them. And what I appreciate appreciated was the the mentoring and the discipleship that the coaches did um, I'm really proud of both of our sons they're both coaches in basketball and football and um, baseball and uh, even there was one point in the game and the referee made a teachable moment yeah. the game could have got bad in a minute with these itty bitty people and not only the people but the fans, the parents, and so... You the, were yelling pretty loud. I was yelling too, but <laughs> the coach, the a referee, got down on his knees and got in their little faces and really made it a teachable moment to even ca calm the atmosphere yeah. in the gym because it was for the championship, Amen. so it was a fun night. When we come back, we'll be sharing more about Partners for Hope Tanzania. That's P like Peter, the number four, HT.org. As you do it unto the least, you do it unto me. We'll be right back. There's plenty more to come. Please don't go away. Welcome back. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and today our guests again today are Dr. Mark and Molly Druffner. They're Catholic missionaries and founders of a fabulous mini ministry called Partners for Hope Tanzania. Please go to their website, p the number four ht dot org. Well, yesterday the show just flew. It was very very fast. So we know how much we have to get in today. But so you went there three months, went with your seven children, came back, and God wasn't done. He said, oh, Mark and Molly, this isn't the end of the story, <laughs> right? Yeah. And so tell our family how God has raised up, because Mark can't be there, and what God has done to raise up people who have come after you, and also the laity to get involved, mm -hmm. Maybe not with being doctors and nurses, but with money. Mm -hmm. 
it's just been amazing. I could mm -hmm. I could talk for hours, but I know we don't have that much time. <laughs> um, one one aside. First, I wanted to tell you that we're very excited to be on EWTN because we watch it a lot, but also because our um, priests in Tanzania, tiny little village, Bwambo, on the top of a mountain in the middle of East Africa, mm. are sitting. Will be sitting in their living rooms, you know, today watching EWTN. Isn't that Praise amazing? The Lord. That is amazing. Yeah, they the got Lord, a little. Lord, we love you. You're part <laughs> yeah. of the family. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So. Um, <laughs> We, the, sec the second year we went back, we decided to go back because we knew that the Lord wasn't done with us. Mm -hmm. And we were, vi we were just convicted that this is, is a lifelong calling. Yeah. It wasn't just a temporary thing. Mm -hmm. um, and so that the next year we went back and we were really blessed with a priest physician named Father Dr. Beta Kire. He's the uh, um, 10 siblings, you know, grew up in a tiny little village where he was taught so he's by a local the, guy. he's local okay. and he was taught by the minnesota sisters um, wow. um st francis. Uh, francis and he um was able to get a degree you know in medicine and the the bishop there um sends a lot of his priests either to rome to get higher education or into medicine so um there are quite a few doctors and nurses, religious, that have gone into medicine there. When we got there, there were a 1,000 doctors for 45 million people. A 1,000 so do doctors for 45 million people. Do the Can't math. Imagine. Okay. And now that's really grown because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the government has Talked about a wait supported. to see a doctor. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, so the bishop encouraged, you know, um, religious to become nurses wow. and priests Great. to become doctors, and it's just been flourishing. So we supported him and another... Um, priest named Father Josephat and uh, Meek Lindy to become um, doctors. And now Father Dr. Beta is getting another degree in surgery. He's doing mm. a three year surgery training. But anyway, we came back and the, he was there. And from there, the three of us kind of got together as a team and said, What does this village really need? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. healthcare, yes. Um, we, we wanted to transform the hospital to build it up, but also we wanted to have staff housing so that the nurses and the doctors who came all the way up the mountain had a place to live. Mm -hmm. So we refurbished many of the houses. Um, and then we, you know, microloans for women. We said if we could really give just a small amount of money, $100, $500 to a woman in the village, she not only could start her own business, but she could send her kids to school. She could put a roof on her, on her hut. She could get, um, you know, solar panels on her roof, which they've done. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. We have we have over 200 microloan businesses now. So it's entrepreneurial work. Yeah. Right, and Great. then we also realize, well, kids need tuition, don't they? For right. the for the families that don't have anything, they don't they don't have cash. It's not a cash society, and so we started with our sister parish in Stillwater, Minnesota, who are we are very grateful <laughs> for, um, has supported us for 10 years, and so. Um, so your parish family mm -hmm. sends money to Partners for Hope Tanzania, and then that money goes to a little boy or a little girl mm -hmm. in the village so they can get an education. Mm -hmm. We do mission appeals every mm -hmm. year at quite a few churches um, in Stillwater, but also in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, who has also taken on a sister parish um, yeah. It's a long story, but we ended up building three churches. Mm -hmm. So um, in we're kind of spread out now into four different villages. And so there's a sister parish for each of those churches. Yeah. Um, and so we do mission appeals every summer, and people just give and give and yes. give and give. And sometimes somebody will come out of the work, woodwork and give $100,000 mm -hmm. or $200,000, mm -hmm. and then we know, okay, now the Lord is calling us to do something bigger. Yeah. Right. So like this year, we, we built a school. Mm -hmm. And next year, we're, we're finishing a maternity center. Um, so it's just, you know, since we got back, we've had so many people become part of the ministry that it's really lifted us. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. they pray for us. They support us financially. They, you know, yeah. wipe our tears yeah. when we're frustrated. Um, we have a wonderful volunteer organization called Mission Doctors Association out of Los Angeles. Um, Elise Frederick is the director, and they support us as volunteers. Mm -hmm. So when we have to buy plane tickets, when we have to get you know new visas, when we have to 
um, do anything in terms of volunteerism or if we want to bring other volunteers with us Mission Doctors Association supports us mm -hmm. that way and they're just an amazing 60 year old organization that sends doctors and nurses to places where they yeah. have no doctors. Yeah. Doc, you know, I'm just thinking about all this and I just see you or maybe the two of you together as you went trying to be obedient to the Lord's call. And then it's almost like a, a little, you see these funnels in, in, in the water and that it just kind of spun down on you both and you didn't know that was gonna happen. But all this stuff starts getting pulled in or going out locally. I mean, you got doctors coming forth now and others that they were around before, it didn't happen, but it's just happening that God used what you did to stimulate so much more there and in Minnesota. Are people allowed to be involved that aren't in Minnesota? I just Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that was a joke. You can come. <laughs> okay. There's a go. screening <laughs> test. Yeah. So what, if you're from New Jersey, uh, I don't know. <laughs> so what do you say? I'm just, all this stuff is being stirred up. People are being stirred up. Projects are being stirred up. Your well, thoughts on that? As I had spoken about the last show, um, the hospital was in a miserable condition when we when we got there um, because there had been no doctor there for six years before we got there. So each year we, that we go, um, we imp try to make an improvement. And the first year there were no mattresses for the beds for the patients. So we raised money for that, we got those. Then there was no power in the hospital. So the electricity on the grid would go out sometimes for a week at a time, there'd be no electricity. So we were able to um, purchase and fundraise uh, solar panels, mm -hmm. uh, but also these big battery banks that would give power to the hospital. Um, and then when the, pot, when the grid went down, and then the solar would regenerate mm -hmm. the power. Then Molly worked on water, getting water to the hospital. I mean, imagine doing a delivery and a C-section. Mm -hmm. I won't get too graphic, but mm -hmm. there's there's blood, there's mm -hmm. mess, mm -hmm. and not being able to wash that up mm -hmm. without water. So we got water for the hospital. Um, after that, we need a sterilizer. You know, they were using pressure cookers, mm -hmm. essentially uh, kitchen grade pressure cookers for instruments. We got a, an industrial pressure, uh, sterilizer. Uh, we, we got an ultrasound machine. Mm -hmm. We had- um, Donated by the Knights of Columbus. Donated, yeah. Way yep. to go Knights. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and- um, you know, health partners in Minnesota uh, donated an x-ray machine. So mm -hmm. we, by hand, packed this x-ray machine and got it, you know, in, in a container and shipped it mm -hmm. to East Africa. Um, you know, we had lab. There had been no lab at all. We, we, had, we had pregnancy tests and urine tests mm -hmm. and, uh, when we first got there. Now we have, you know, essentially a, a pretty good lab. Um, so every year, you know, we try to build. Mm -hmm. But now we have equipment, but we need better training. Right. And so I'm, I'm trying to encourage other physicians uh, to come and teach and nurses to come and teach. We need labor and delivery nurses to teach fetal monitoring. There's no fetal monitoring in the country. Imagine delivering a baby without fetal monitoring. Mm -hmm. we, we got the first fetal monitor in northern Tanzania ever to, to monitor the unborn baby. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you know a baby's in trouble Right. If you can't monitor the heartbeat, mm -hmm. so we need we need teaching for that. So it's it's, mind, it's mind boggling to me. Mm. Could I've not traveled like I mean, it just doesn't seem like this could be possible. But but you have to imagine <laughs> being a patient in that situation. Right. You, you know, your your wife comes goes into labor and 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 being in a place like that. You know, now you understand why the the morbidity and mortality is higher. Mm -hmm. And you know, they to give an example when we deliver a baby. Um, and wrap the baby up and give it to the mother, the family does not celebrate for sometimes two or three hours because they're used to babies being sick and sometimes dying. So mm -hmm. when there's a healthy baby born, it's a couple hours and then they're singing and then mm -hmm. there's congratulating it's and they're so happy. Too. And right. it, it was so, it struck yes. me because I'm like, why is this happening? And the nurses would say, because they're used to sometimes things happening. Right. And so there's such a hesitation there's and a, hes a pause, yeah. right? It's like, we don't know if this baby's gonna go the distance. Yeah. Wow. But then there's the celebration, like Mark is saying, you know, I'm, I'm in bed in the middle of the night, my kids are sleeping and all of a sudden we hear this singing, beautiful, mm -hmm. you know, in harmony singing mm -hmm. of these women. And I, and I just say, oh, a baby's alive. Yeah, they're celebrating you know? the birth of um, But yeah. that, that joy, you know, yes. just, that one of the reasons I love going back is because I miss their joy, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. it just permeates yeah. everything. And, and you're, the milieu that you're in is a dedicated Catholic milieu. 
yes. the gospel of life, the good news mm -hmm. of life. People mm -hmm. desire life mm -hmm. to yeah. come forth yeah. in marriage yeah. and, and the family and and having clean water and building a mm -hmm. place. And it's all about life. Everybody's dedicated mm -hmm. to that. Yeah, we're a Catholic mm -hmm. hospital. We're St. Luke's Hospital. And, you know, even in Tanzania where, um, you know, abortion is illegal, you know, in other places um, in the country, you know, they might think otherwise. And so we, we try to cultivate the culture of life at our hospital. And we, we pray with our staff. We encourage the staff to go to mass every morning. And mm -hmm. um, yes, we, we, we yeah. try to really yeah. keep the, those Catholic values. Yeah. And Molly, tell our family the story about um, the little girl, Grace, sure. who, because education is so important. Yeah. Tell our family about that story. Yeah. So we were doing, focusing mostly on the hospital for the first couple of years. And with Father Dr. Beta and Mark, and myself, uh, we we did a you know put most of our money and our time into the hospital. We thought we're just going to do healthcare, and then water came, and we realized okay besides the mish, besides the hospital needing water, people, people need, water, need water, and they started coming to us and asking us for water. So we started the water project, and the microloans like I told you about, and then one day Father Dr. Beta said okay we've got this little girl, she's really smart but she doesn't have any money to go to school. Her parents died of HIV. Now she's living with her uncle who has HIV and she's living in a house that has no roof. I have the, a picture, I don't know if I gave the picture, but a picture of her in this brick home, smiling of course with no roof, no roof. rain or shine, <laughs> and sh all she wants is to go to school. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, okay, it's a Catholic school, it's gonna be thousands, you know. And I said, well, how much, how much does it cost? And he said, well, for books, uniform, mattress, which they have to bring to school for their, their boarding, uh, everything is $600. For and the I'm year. Think, yeah, and I'm mm -hmm. thinking, I just bought a bike for my son for mm -hmm. $600, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But I thought, I don't think we could start another program. We have so many programs already started. So, you know what? I think, no, we're not going to do education. We just can't take that on. That's for another organization, you know. <laughs> And then um, I, drove, I was driving home after I had that conversation at the office and I opened my mailbox and guess what was there? A $600 check. I believe you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you've been there. Mm -hmm. so, um, and someone gets a wonderful Catholic education that year. For and $600. She, so then we started sponsoring her mm -hmm. um, and all of her friends mm -hmm. and then all of their friends. Right. And so now our sister parish in Stillwater and sister parish in Lake Geneva sponsor uh, high school and grade school kids. So we, mm -hmm. we just finished building our first school called St. John the Baptist mm -hmm. Academy, they mm -hmm. like to say. And it's K through eight um, school right there on campus, right on the mission and so many kids coming from all over who could never afford mm -hmm. to go there well, and it's it's only two hundred fifty dollars a year for them so mm -hmm. between you know two hundred and six hundred dollars you can go to two of the best catholic schools in the country and um so and people really love to sponsor them mm -hmm. you know people are americans are so generous yes. and they're so willing to just we want to we want to help you know we want to give and so we're able to set yep. up programs mm -hmm. for them to do that. Well, and education is the key because uh, we're getting folks from our village, young people from our village who want to be doctors and nurses. Uh, we have a, a young doctor named Moses who's starting this month. And, you know, we supported him through his training in medical school. And now he'll work at the hospital, mm -hmm. nurses, midwives. So we want, the only way this will be a sustaining Catholic, you know, hospital is by supporting the education of these young people to be doctors and nurses. Mm -hmm. and, and it's just education and then passing the training on to, for physicians from this country or nurses from this country who can help keep their training up. So you're beginning to see that take root and take place. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's beautiful. Well, the best is yet to come. Yeah, yeah. it yeah. is. It's That's wonderful. exciting. Yeah. Well, we're going to hold you over for the final segment, okay. and we want to know how we might be able to plug in and to help this ministry. Okay. It's so beautiful, so very, very important. We hope you all are encouraged. And there's a part for all of us to play, whether in this ministry or in, in whatever ministry it might be. Every Catholic is called to be a missionary of human dignity, redeemed by the cross, and you were sent by God, not just the Druffners. We could look at them and say, well, that's really wonderful. Sure, glad they're doing that. Lord, what's the role and mission you have for me that is unique to me that I could do? Where is it? How do I do that? We'll be right back. Plenty more to come. Don't go away.
welcome back. We just have several minutes left to the show, and there's a lot of questions we could ask, but we just want to toss it back to each one of you. A ministry like this, you're so connected to it. You have such compassion. You know the people. You have such hope. So what do you think are some of the most important things you want to say or that our people need to know? We'll start with you, Doc. Well, I guess I, I want to challenge physicians and nurses uh, out there in our country, uh, Catholics and non-Catholics, that you, you have some of the best training in the world. We, we have some of the best training, uh, you know, anywhere. And there are people in this world that need your help. And uh, my experience in Tanzania has been that uh, they need training, they need good, consistent education, and they get it in their schools and they need support with that. And uh, all of the physicians and nurses out there, um, uh, you have good hearts because that's why you went into medicine, and I know that. And um, but I, I get other physicians who approach me and say, "Well, how can you do this? You have to leave your practice and all of that." And I would I would challenge you to put God in control, and <laughs> and we have to minimize what keeps us here. What keeps us here? It might be our our loans, our debts, you know, we get ourselves into sometimes a lot of situations where we have new cars and, you know, new boats and second homes and all these things. Mm. And um, this is a first world problem. And I think that if we were to give up some of that in order to go and share what we have, because yes, you'll be away from your practice. Yes, you will lose income, but you will gain something greater and you will give, you will give your training for uh, saving lives and also for helping people to stay healthy uh, because all of us are here because there was a nurse or doctor that delivered us and got us into this world safely and if we needed resuscitation as newborns somebody was there mm -hmm. and um, so don't be afraid you know that's the thing is don't be afraid if God is calling you to do that then there's plenty of places to go and if you can't go then then be a sender you know support support those who can go. Um, there are lots of Catholic mission organizations, Mission Doctors Association, Partners for Hope. Uh, so don't be afraid. Mm. Yeah. Molly, your thoughts? Well, of course, I would say everyone should go because <laughs> I just, you know, find, I've found my joy there and I know most people who go do. Um, it's a life-changing experience. Um, I think we do also need teachers. There's a lot of, um, you know, subjects in the schools that need teachers, especially computers, yeah. technology, math, um, English, of course. So if teachers want to come, um, there's also an organization called Lay Mission Helpers yeah. that's uh, wonderful for teachers and actually any profession um, can volunteer. It's a Catholic organization also out of Los Angeles. but. Um, I just want to inspire women, especially with children, to not be afraid. You know, I kept hearing that from John Paul II, my hero. You know, be not afraid, mm -hmm. open wide the doors of Christ. And that's been my motto ever since we started. Um, sometimes I know Mark gets a little bit nervous about finances and things because he's the dad. But um, I just always tell him, be not afraid. Mm -hmm. you know, and it works out every, every time we go. It, God, God provides and people yes. step forward to support us. And we've had so much support. So if you can't go, there's a lot of people that absolutely just yeah. can't go, mm -hmm. then send us or send somebody that you know by supporting them with prayers, yeah. uh, with, you know, with donations, mm -hmm. of yeah. even material donations. It doesn't have to be money, mm -hmm. medications, clothing, yes. you know. And don't be afraid to ask your church. You know, our Catholic church is together in this. It's what... Mm -hmm. what the Catholic Church, you know, started hospitals. That that was their mission. So, mm -hmm. uh, you can you can ask your parish and network with them. So Thank you. Yeah. Thank you to the both Thank of you. For Thank you for, us. for welcoming yeah. the Lord's Thank landing you. on you both, mm -hmm. not only for your own sake and what you were to do, but to be used as a conduit and as a source for many other people to get involved to minister to Jesus Christ. In these beautiful people from Tanzania. So thank you. Thank you. Again, Thank go you to P number4ht.org, Partners for Hope Tanzania, p4ht.org. Pray that you were blessed today with this show, and that you would sense that call to mission. And God bless all of our friends there in Tanzania. Keep it on EWTN. Bye now.